Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name, again, my name is Yin Xiong. I'm chief architect of cloud platform at Huawei. Um, it's good to be here at the CSF conference. And personally, I have been involved in the CSF since the beginning, back to July 19, uh, 2015. So in the last one and a half years, I haven't seen an enormous growth of the uh, CNCF, both from technology perspective and also from the uh, organizational perspective. So it really becomes a home for the uh, cloud native scenes. So we are proud to be part of it. Actually, I'm looking for the uh, slides. Hold on a minute. I was looking for this. Excuse me. What that? <coughs> I got it. Thank you. I got it. Okay. Got it. Thanks. So uh, back to last year's conference at Seattle, I introduced uh, the all cloud strategy that happened at Huawei. At the center of the strategy is the cloud native platforms that are unified across the company. And this is, uh, is a platform we call Fusion Stage. It's a past product based on the Kubernetes. This platform now is supporting many internal and external customers that are helping them for move to the cloud native architecture. So today, I want to share with you some of the use case scenarios we have. One of the scenarios is uh, our own internal IETs. I want to share with you our experience and the, of the best practice we learned during the process of moving to the cloud native architecture. So I need to be a background. Huawei IT has 800, more than 800 applications that deploy around the globe across eight data centers. And those 800 plus applications running uh, close to 1 million virtual machines with 170,000 consistent users. 1 million virtual machines, that's a lot of resources for 800 ap applications. So one of the big problems they have, you know, among the other pinpoints, is that resource utilization problems. They just very quickly run out of VMs that need for new applications, for new instance. So, and also, the resource utilizations per VM is really low. So they started looking at cloud native architecture back in 2015. They start to redesign some of the apps they have with the microservices architecture. They start to containerize some of the applications. By the end of last year, 2016, they are able to use the platform to manage more than 4,000 nodes that are running 20,000 containers in the, run, in the production environment. So they get so excited, they set up a goal for this year is to run 100,000 containers in the production environment. Well, this is really a big target for them. Anyway, but they, this cloud native platform helps them to run more apps with the same amount of resources. In some scenarios, they are able to reduce the number of VMs from 100 to 2,000, uh, to uh, 20s for the same amount, same amount of uh, workload. Additionally, they uh, double, sometimes triple the resource utilization per VM. And also, they're able to improve the global deployment time to 8,000 centers from one week down to the minutes. You know, this is a real value that cloud native can bring to the enterprise. So along the way from POC to production, we learned some valuable lessons and with some of the best practice. At the first, you have to choose the right set of applications to start with your cloud native uh, journey. Some applications are just too difficult to redesign with microservice architecture. You don't, want to you don't want to start with those applications. Secondly, you need a strategy for managing your containers at the wrong time. You need to ask the question, do I need to access my container at the wrong time? Do I need a persistent storage that for container data? Do I need to run multiple processes per container, which you can run. You can run multiple processes per container. Do my containers need to communicate with backend system that are still running in the VM or physical machines? You need, because you need to set up a network for them. 
So these questions, they help you define the right strategy and the right tool sets for you to manage the containers at the runtime. Additionally, in most cases, you will run a multiple cluster in your, cluster, in your production environment. So having a global cluster management strategy is critical to your cloud native enterprise. Well, thanks to the Kubernetes Federation project, that makes things much easier to manage across the multiple clusters. But there are still many things to be done. The one thing we did is that we built a point-to-point -point algorithm to synchronize the container image across eight data centers. This really helped us to reduce the deployment times from you know, uh, a week to down to the minutes. Similarly, for the network containers or container network, you need to understand or know your network requirements. You need to figure out the network performance for your containers, the network latency for your containers, and those eventually decide your network solutions for your container applications. For us, we have been working on a solution called ACAN, which supports many different network schemes. We support you know, overlay, underlay architecture. We support layer two, layer three, level uh, four networking. We support VLANs and NAT, and so on. Just this morning, I received an email that talking about the requirements from customers, and they want a multiple IP address per container. Those are requirements you need to understand for you to define your strategy, how to manage the network for your container application. And it's critical to, to your enterprise, cloud native enterprise. I like this feature, a feature we call hybrid application orchestration. Now, we slightly extend the architecture of Kubernetes by introducing the process controller shown in the diagrams. Now, I have one platform that can manage container-based and non-container-based applications within the same clusters. We found that this is really useful for our customers, for some of our existing applications, helping them to move from the latency applications to the cloud native architecture. And this feature also helps our own IT to reduce 95% of manual work which is needed for them to manage the non-container applications. It's a cool feature. Last but not least is you have to simplify your storage management. I don't need to emphasize how important this is for your enterprise. Now for us, we are working with a company like EMC, Fujitsu, Hitachi, to allow the platform to dynamically provision the storage with standard API. We are hoping that we, this will converge with CSI, the container storage interface that the community is working on. I think that's all for me. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of our framework. <laughs>